Okay. Okay. Here we go. The reason why I bring up the book, You Are Becoming a Galactic Human, is because it gives a history of Earth. It gives a history of Earth, and it says that humans, and this, cha this really changed my thinking. It says that humans are a new breed of the stewards of Earth. And what does it mean to be the stewards of Earth? In the galactic history, in the Earth history, the Presetians used to be in charge of the Earth. These are the whales and the dolphins. The whales and the dolphins were in charge of the Earth. They were also dinoids. These are the dinosaurs. Then the reptilians came. The reptilians came. They had the right to rule. They, there became a war. The Presetians, who were the guardians of the Earth, decided that the only way that they could save the planet was to blow up their nuclear reactors, which created Pangaea. So they blew up their nuclear reactors, created Pangaea, retreated into the oceans, the reptoids stayed and ruled, the dinoids all died, and now humans are here and we are meant to be the guardians of Earth. It is our divine right to rule. And let's talk about that. What does it mean to rule? Um, I really, I was talking to someone the other day, one of our beautiful members, about the word radical. And the word radical and, and she said, oh, the word radical sounds like, you know, like a skater, like skater boys from the 90s. And I said, yes. And I like, I like that vibe. And it's the same with the, um, with the word rule. You rule. What do we mean when we say that? You're really cool. We don't mean you're dominating me. And so I think deep down we understand that the word rule is not supposed to mean this dominating energy. And there's a, there's a different type of rulership that comes with power. So really what we're talking about in this stream is power. And we're talking about power dynamics. And we're talking about humans' role as, quote unquote, the most powerful beings on the planet. What does it mean to have a higher level of intelligence? What does it mean to have the higher cognitive functioning of asking these deeper questions? What is it that sets humans apart from animals? There is something, right? Animals maybe don't use tools, animals blah, 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 whatever. When we look at animals and we're compassionate, we can see that they have an emotional, intelligent reality going on inside of themselves. What does this equate to and why do we belittle it? We think of it as lesser than us. And the Bible has been a really big promoter of this top-down power pyramid structure. All animals were created for man. Woman was created from man. So we have this hierarchy, this hierarchical understanding of human men at the top, of human women below them, and of the animals going down below them. This is really detrimental to not only every tier of the pyramid. It's detrimental to the tier at the top. And this is where creating a truly matriarchal society, and when I talk about matriarchal society, we're talking about that circular understanding of eco rather than ego, because matriarchal understanding cares for all people. And it cares for all beings. And it cares for all realities. Patriarchal understanding puts one at the top two underneath that, three underneath that, four underneath that. This is how everything is structured on this planet. If you go to work, you have a manager, you have a boss, they have a boss, they have a regional manager, they have a boss, they have a boss, they have a boss, and then there's the CEO. And then who's the boss of the CEO? The stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders have the boss to the money? So we have this top-down power pyramid of people. People at the top with the most amount of power, people at the bottom with the least amount of power. This is even evident in government. This is evident in, it, this is evident everywhere in society. And a lot of people are really quick to say, oh, this is the natural way of being because it is so prevalent in our reality. But that is not true. This is, this is unnatural. This is actually extremely unnatural because it causes suffering in every single tier of this pyramid. And we think, and this is this comes into race. We have hierarchies of race, and we've got Native Americans getting very little to no recognition or respect on this tier. And so we've got we've got gender, we've got race, we've got you know, and 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 you can list who has the most rights, and you probably know in your head you could probably say, well, 
it's the white man, it's the white woman, you know, and, and we go down this list of who has the most privilege in our society. This is wrong. And it's not just wrong because people are oppressed. It's wrong because it actually means that we're all oppressed. The top-down power pyramid doesn't end. There is no one person at the top who is suddenly enlightened and happy. The people at the top are miserable. They are unfulfilled because this is unhealthy. This is not the appropriate use of power. This is an infantile understanding of power. This is, this is like not the way that we, this is not the fullest picture that we are capable of creating. So when we talk about humans' role on Earth, and we talk about the difference between humans and animals, and we talk about how humans have a higher, more power, this power can be used in a way that does not oppress or harm anyone. These concepts, when we start to internalize them, are radical and they'll shift your entire perspective of the world. When you begin to understand that the oppression of others is not powerful, that it actually hinders you, that it doesn't create more power. How, do, how does someone become the most powerful person they can possibly be? Is it to have the most money? Is it to have the most employees? Is it to have people waiting on them hand and foot? What is power? True power is allowing the most divinity to radiate through your physical form. True power is creating systems where divinity can radiate through those forms. Our power comes from our divinity. Our power comes from something higher. If you think that you can have power without divinity, it's a false power. It's a made up power. It's, and, and in the past on earth, we didn't even recognize, we didn't even see, we didn't even feel the potential for divine power. So yes, it was about what fancy watch you had, what fancy car you had, keeping up with the Joneses and everything like that. That is not real power and it doesn't create real joy. What's the point of power if it doesn't create joy? Joy is the ultimate goal. So when we consider using our power, when we consider becoming powerful, when we consider dominating the world, or we consider working in stewardship with the world, and we consider our role as far as the guardians of this planet, the guardians of the children, the guardians of the animals, we have to step into a completely... You can start in your own life simply by leads you to the ultimate power. Divinity creates joy. joy. Joy is your guidance. Joy is your GPS for how to get to the most power. Because we can't follow negativity. We can't follow false power and expect to find joy. But when we're on the path of truth, that's going to lead us to joy. And joy and truth, are, they, they lead to one another. Because the, because the universe wants us to be happy. That's why it's easy to understand this stuff. Because it's all here. We just have been completely brainwashed to not recognize it. When you find something that makes you truly happy, when you follow a path of your purest joy, where you don't harm other people, where you're in alignment with these concepts of erasing and eradicating hierarchical power and creating a system of love and support for everyone. This is the thing. When we have a, a top-down power pyramid of oppression, everyone is, is, is operating on the conception that they are keeping someone else down so that they can be up but then someone above them is working on keeping them down so they can be up. It's an entire system of keeping people down. Conceptualize with me what it means to have a, a system where we all want to raise each other up. Then I have the power to raise people below me up 
and the people above me have the power to raise me up, and how high can we go? Instead of how low can we go? This is a, what we're in right now is a system of, of dragging downward, of pulling, of, of suffering. But when we create a system where we're all lifted up, the sky's the limit. We go up and up and up and up. What is divinity, someone asks. Divinity is something higher. As humans, we have to connect to something higher. Why? Does it, is it real? Is it true? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's real. It doesn't matter what's true. It doesn't matter what you can prove. What matters is the joy that you get your attention into what can be better. You're raised up. You follow a higher path than you would have otherwise followed. So, yes, divinity is real. I know that is true, but you don't have to believe that it's real. All you have to do is analyze in your own life. When you believe in something higher, how does that make your life change versus when you don't? When we put our focus on something higher, we are raised up. So what does it mean to be stewards of the earth? My friend was in a Facebook group and they asked, if you could have one wish, what would you wish for? The majority of people said, I pray, I would wish that all humans would just disappear off the face of the earth. This is brainwashing. The idea that humans are a scourge on the earth, that humans are a virus, all these, these are just terrible, detrimental ways of thinking. No, humanity has not been great for the planet. No, humanity has not stepped into our role as divine stewards. But we're necessary. We are necessary parts of the system. Humanity is here for a reason. Humanity has the power that it has for a reason. What is this reason? Think about it in your own mind. What role could humans possibly have that could be benefiting the world as a whole? And I don't just mean benefiting more humans. How could humans live in a way that truly benefits the earth? Humans have a higher consciousness, not higher than animals, is to take divinity, put it into our bodies, and radiate it out into earth. <laughs> oh. When we radiate out our power and we understand that we don't know better this is where the hierarchical understanding comes from. We think, oh, we know better than animals, so it's okay for us to kill them and eat them, or whatever you're doing, to enslave them or whatever. When we say we know better than something else, that's not true. That's not what power is. But when I go, I use my backyard as an example. When I go into my backyard and I go into a meditation and I tap into my plants, I, I can tell what they need. When I have a deeper empathy, when I have a higher sensitivity to the beings around me and their needs, and I have the compassion to want to raise them up into their highest way of being, then we all benefit. I can use the example of my fig tree. My fig tree and I have had many different experiences this, this summer because of the telepathy training program club, where a lot of the practices involved communicating with a tree. I find it easy to communicate with trees, but I don't often take the time to do it. Because of Telepathy Training Program Club, which you can join on Patreon, highly recommended, I connected to this fig tree. And this fig tree gave me a few fruit. And these fruit tasted bad. And I said, tree, these figs taste like shit. And we were able to have a telepathic understanding that the tree needed more nitrogen in the soil. So I went and I got nitrogen-rich soil, and I put it on the base of the roots. And, I, and there was no fruit on the tree, again, for several weeks. Then I had a potluck, and on that day, suddenly, dozens of fruits were ripe, and they were so sweet and good. And it was because of this telepathic understanding that I was able to help the tree. And in helping the tree, the tree helped me and created all this beautiful fruit for me to share with my friends. This is just one example of what we can do. When we see things like the Disney movies where the birds are carrying people's clothes and and I think like the idea of um, the difference between 
<laughs> These squirrels are arguing. Um, the difference between the Flintstones and Cinderella. Think about that difference. This is a patriarchal and a matriarchal understanding. In Cinderella, the animals are happily at her service. She has all these animals. It's Cinderella, right? Where the birds are, or is it, is it Cinderella? You know what I'm talking about, where the birds carry the little cloak, all the animals are helping out, they help with the chores and everything like that. That is matriarchal understanding. That's true power. That's true harmony. And in, in helping animals, animals help us. In helping plants, and plants help us. When we talk about like the Flintstones, they have, they have oppressed the animals. These animals are slaves. There's no doubt about it. They're miserable. They're often shown as miserable. And so these are the two differences we can think about as our potential for reality. These are cartoons I know, but I think they're indicators of a larger reality that we can tap into. So when we talk about power, we talk about creating the highest sense of divinity in ourselves. We talk about having a sensitivity to other people, and we talk about reversing the structure from oppression into assistance, into lifting people up. This is Unitopian reality. To create something together that is amazing for all. Yes, thank you, Crowd Democracy. It does help when we are cooperating and working together. Snow White too has that. Harmony and beauty will help lead you to joy and joy is a clue you're on the path. Once you're all radiating love to all without giving anything from ourselves because it comes from higher. Yes. I love you all too. So that's my speech on that. Um, when we talk about, you know, there are things that we do even in our forests where we clear we clear wood so that there aren't big fires, but then there are fires. You know, it's like we can be in harmony with these things. In our gardens, we can create little ecosystems where plants and animals actually thrive at the same time as offering us high crop yield. The idea that we should create a single crop with a single plant and cover it with chemicals so no pests come is completely out of alignment. It's for us. Thank you for being patient with these annoying internet problems. And thank you for joining me for Cam Church. I am so grateful. We will do our closing prayer. Spirit of Uni, please bless every single individual who has joined all the members who are watching this stream. Please allow everyone to be filled with the brightest possible light and understanding so that they can go through their week with the highest sense of joy and truth in their hearts. Very grateful to all of you. Um, please come back next week. Can't wait to see you. You need blessed.